talk about one of my favorite topics, and this is big cats. Big cats are oftentimes treated poorly. They're actually called hogs, like it's a like that's a cool thing to call them. You know, I mean, uh, their their body weight and their eating habits are are kind of jokingly made fun of, and I just don't think that we treat our bigs like athletes enough. And I think that the best bigs are just amazing athletes. Talk about an amazing athlete. Jost Daly, he is 6'6", 306. And by the way, he's he's in like his 15th or 16th year in the NFL. Fast guys have long, long NFL careers. Uh, slow does not age well. Well, anyway, at the Combine, Staley ran a 4.73 in the 40. He's 6'6", 306. But what's even crazier is that as a high school track athlete, he didn't weigh 306, by the way. I think he weighed like 220. Um, he ran 21.9 in the 200-meter dash. A 21.9 will sometimes place in the Illinois State meet. And uh, that's really fast. This was put out by my friends at Tracking Football. Uh, they've totally changed recruiting in America where they use – track times and measurements to to add another layer of understanding in the recruiting process so the 49ers who were in the super bowl last year um eight of their top guys were multi-sport athletes in high school four of the eight played basketball and i think basketball players that's like professional plyometrics um footwork professional footwork people uh, six out of the eight ran track two of the eight played lacrosse but it's just outstanding for us to see that we should never badmouth another sport to a good athlete the only time and i i hate to admit this the only time i've ever encouraged a guy not to play uh, for example basketball is if he would be at the end of the bench He'd be like the 14th man on a 14-man team, and he wouldn't even get good practice reps. You know, I think somehow they're wasting their time if they're doing that. But, but for good athletes, they should never be encouraged to specialize. This is a, a, one of my favorite guys in this year's combine, Tristan Wirfs from Iowa. And he was a first-rounder, of course, because guys that are 6'5", 322, who run 4.85, who are invited to the combine, they are a first round draft choice, no question. So this is like the ultimate uh, multi-sport athlete, in my opinion, even though they pretty much all are. But this guy, what do you do in the winter? He was a wrestler. Oh, and by the way, he was a state champion as a wrestler. Oh, what do you do in the spring? He was a thrower. And by the way, he was a state champion thrower. So no coach got into his ear saying, hey, I think you could maybe be an NFL player. You need to come work out with me in the weight room nine months a year. No coach did that to him, or maybe they did, and Tristan said, fuck off or something. But I really think that we need to be multi-sport warriors with every kid that has the potential to play multi-sports. This is a great example of somebody that can move. Adam Whitworth... Um, in the 2006 NFL Combine was 6'7", 334. That is a couple inches taller than the normal tackles in the Combine, about 20 pounds heavier. But he still ran a 5'17 in the 40, which to me is just, that, that's like an elephant running a 5'17. That's fantastic. And when I looked it up, I, I was expecting him to be a thrower or something in, in track. But instead, it said um, that he was a tennis champion in high school. And more important is that this December, Adam Whitworth will turn 39 years old. He's a starting offensive tackle right now for the Rams at the age of treat our bigs like hogs. This is a great story, too, on the flip side. Nate Herbig played at Stanford where he's an All-American, and he came out early. Now, you guys are football guys, so you understand if a guy comes out early, that means that his agent has said that you'll probably go in the first three rounds. This guy was a fantastic football player. Well, he was not 6'5". I remember offensive tackles uh, at the combine are almost always 6'5". 
If they're two inches taller, they're strangely big. If they're two inches shorter, they are short. They are typically also 312 pounds unless they're a giant like Whitworth or if they're, there was a 6'8 guy last year. And uh, so, so anyway, he was fat. He was fat for a guy 6'3. And then he ran 5.41. 5.41 was the slowest time recorded at the NFL Combine. So he didn't get a chance to say, oh, on second thoughts, I got to go back to Stanford, right? No, you don't get to go back to your college days if you declare. So what happens to a guy that's a little too short, a little too fat, and way too slow? He doesn't get drafted. So he was very lucky. He was a smart guy and learned how to snap the ball and was a backup center for the Eagles last year. But as I said earlier, an undrafted free agent is disrespected for his whole career. I mean, that tag goes along with him. So the, your ability to sprint, you don't want to be the slowest offensive tackle at the NFL Combine. And it's strange. You think, well, why do you have to be fast if all you do is play like a sumo and you're like taking two steps backwards in a crouched position all the time? Well, the people who can move the fastest are the best movers. They're the best movers in every direction. They're the best accelerators. They're the best at first step. They're the best at balance. They're the best at power because extreme movement is sprinting. And when he gets time to 541, that tells everybody that he is horrible at the movement extreme and he's going to have a short career and slow guys fatigue faster than fast guys and all those things are going to work against you now along with this course i would strongly urge you if you're a football coach to get feed the cats 101 and feed the cats 102 the speed workout and x factor workout is pretty much the entire off-season program for speed development mm -hmm.